Hi, it's Susan at Seaside Stitches and I'm just on to give you a quick update. I don't know what that update is. Oh yes. <laughs> Uh, thank you for watching my channel and you're very welcome here and I really appreciate you being there so thank you and today I'm just going to do a quick catch up I've just got a few little things to say and then I'll be off again I'm hoping I'm not going to be too long and keep you too long and um, have I been sewing yes I've been sewing but not a great deal and we've had some home improvements done and the window is now done which is wonderful but I just wanted to just give a quick update because I've not been on sorry I just noticed the clouds are absolutely wonderful if I get chance and if I remember I'll just take a picture of that because it is like a picture window and now look through it and there is a picture of wonderful skyness <laughs> okay so I haven't done much um, sewing recently because the place has been upside down a bit because we had to take some furniture down so that they could get in to put to fit the window etc etc so everything's been in a bit of a muddle but that has actually helped in a way because I've resorted yet again I've resorted my room not massively but just gone through boxes that things had just got put in while we were waiting for this and that and I've managed to sort quite a few of those and reassign them to different places so that's been good I did say I would come back and explain about which cotton fabrics that I bought on a little day out or a couple of weeks out of buying things for bag making investments really I could tell myself for bag making and gift making and things that are not garment, garment related and I haven't managed to do that as a video I've been taking snaps here and there and I will put some footage in in, in my next video about that but one day I just spent washing and ironing fabric and uh, <laughs> and I still have quite a few left to iron, press, whatever. Um, I, always, I, I always wash my fabrics, even if it's not for dressmaking. I wash bag making, quilt making, anything that has come from somewhere else. I don't know where it's been. I don't know what it's picked up. I don't know what I would be transferring and... I just prefer to know that I have washed it and pressed it in a manner that I feel is clean with some integrity that I'm not passing on stuff. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I'm not going into it. I don't want to do loads of editing, which I say every time, but I always end up with quite a lot of editing. But anyway, so I haven't done much in the way of bag making. I've done lots of sorting. I've done lots of put things in um, little kits, if you like, of what fabrics I'm marrying to other fabrics and what hardware needs to go with them or binding or notions or anything like that so I've been doing a, a bit of that I've been finding though that I'm not I'm having problems it's something that I get it's not something I need investigating but I've been having problems cognitively with with um, sequencing so just a little example is that I found the toile for the Bakerloo top that I made a few months ago and I decided to go into the bathroom because, oh, I have my own ensuite, you know, in my sewing room. <laughs> yes, because it was my bedroom. Anyway, I went into the bathroom because that was warmer in there. And because um, that's the other thing, we've been having several climates because at the front of the house, we attract the sun and we get our own solar power from the, just from the sun through the windows. But at the back of the house, it's quite blustery and we don't get the sun much. It kind of travels across and doesn't get round that side to actually send any sun in but never mind that's another story so I nipped in there to try it on I had a cardigan a button-up cardigan and a polar neck on and so I took off my cardi took off my polar neck and in the process knocked off me I think I flicked an earring out or something did something that distracted me put the earring back did whatever it was and the next thing I know I ha I am buttoning up my cardigan again so all I did was take them off and put them back on again, <laughs> not actually do the <laughs> the process that I was in, ex, intending to do, which was try on the twirl. And so my life has been a little bit like that lately. So I just thought I'd share that. And I'm sure some of you may understand what that's like, but others of you are just going, what? <laughs> anyway, so I haven't been able to trust myself to make big decisions about what I'm actually sewing and how I'll do, go about it. That's basically why I'm telling you that. 
and so we got the window in Alan managed the radiator arrived we managed between us to get it fixed on the wall well he did most of that but we, he managed a way that he wasn't actually lifting so he has managed to get that all working now um, connected working and we do have a central heating system not that we can afford to put it on but at times we are limiting ourselves to an hour here and there or whatever and timing it as many others are doing um, in this situation and also the situation the bigger situation the political situation the domestic politics the world politics the global issues have really got me down lately and I know this is not a place to talk about that and so I'm not going to go into any detail, but I have been quite distracted and quite distressed about how things have been going and my sense of helplessness, which then leads to hopelessness, doesn't it? So that's kind of where I've been emotionally at times, but also I've been quite uplifted by other things um, and by people and by people who do good things and, and hopeful things in the world. What I have been doing is looking at, um, I, I did talk about in a previous video that I would take apart this, it was an evening gown that I wore for my son and daughter-in-law's wedding celebration. They got married in Dundee but they had a, a do in the northwest for family and friends that could come to that. And um, oh, we've got lipstick on it now. So I've took the bodice off and actually there is not enough fabric in it for me to make a kind of kimono style dressing gown kind of thing. So I'm not quite sure what I will make with it. Um, I'm practicing on the bodice that I did um, unpick. I am going to practice how easy or difficult it is to sew. And I really don't know what to do with it. And I don't know that it's something I want to rush at before the 31st of October. I would like to take part in the challenge because I do upcycle quite a lot of things, um, but I'm not sure if this is going to be the thing that I do. And I did have, under my bed, I have some plastic boxes with lids on and um, I've got dresses that don't fit me anymore. And there were two that I thought, well, the actual, the dress that I actually wore for the wedding, I was going to upcycle that. I'm talking in the past tense now because I got it out, I've taken photos of it and I have thought about what I could make with both of them and probably they would both end up as project bags which is fine and um, I worked out how I could keep the pleats in one for the the bit of the gathered bit on the project bag that I like making that was is a Debbie Shaw's make but then yesterday I just thought well how far away from fitting me are they? <laughs> Well, so one of them has gone back into, I mean, I've had it years and years, but I used to just love it. It's really bright and stripy and um, colourful. And I could wear, because I don't like my arms out, I would wear a top underneath it, like a long sleeve t-shirt and, and dress it and style it with a cardigan that matched, because there were so many different colours in it. I think I've got a photo of it, so I will pop it in if I get round to it, because I just can't make this complicated. The other thing is, on Friday Sews, the format, there is the option to have changed the format, and the format seems to be going to be going forward, sometimes I think anyway, that people are doing a week in the life. And I find those, I love to do them, but my mood and my energies and my decision about whether I'll put some makeup on or have my hair washed or walk about like when it a slob um, changes day to day and I can't be rely I can't rely on the fact that I'll be able to pop in my sewing room and talk about something for two or ten minutes each day and then have the time and energy and inclination to edit it all together because I, what I find about Friday sews is beautiful for me and for when I watch them is the simplicity of what you're going to get is a little bit of how they are, how they've been, what they're up to and and what sewing have they managed to do or what sewing are they planning to do. And I find it quite a simple, relaxing, almost meditative way of um, watching a vlogger. And I enjoy doing those types of videos 
now that I realise that you don't need to sew in them, <laughs> which I didn't understand at first. Anyway, so that's me. I'm talking quite a lot or quite fast, but um, I'm feeling very positive this morning. And yesterday I thought, if I feel OK, I will do a video. So I have some news, some good news. So I'll tell you that towards the end, well, in a little while. Um, so what I have been doing is trying to work out about finishing my yasmin dress that I started at the, I'm going to call it the dressmaker's ball, the social sewing day that we did, um, Northwest Sewing Social run by Christine at Gemini Stitches <laughs> and um, yes yeah, so we did that and I just started it, didn't make any progress at all and had to take it out because I was just distracted and chatting and enjoying the environment and I've now got back onto it and putting it together gently and again I'm not rushing at anything because I can't necessarily follow my thoughts. The other thing is I just want to thank the people who left anything on the um, swaps table because I made, um, I've cut out a toile for the Nico top. It's a true bias. It's kind of more or less, people are saying, it's more or less a similar thing to the Freya top. Um, doesn't look like it on that. Ooh. Oh, doesn't look like it on that dress, but it is. That's you can have that very kind of cut in, whatever. But that is the you've got two choices, really. So so I want to see how it fits and then how I will need to alter it because usually I need to add a low bust adjustment and I wasn't aware, I was um, very gratefully I am to So Amelia, to Amelia at So Amelia who mentioned this one time and um, it's ages ago and I bought it. I, I didn't realise that So Hot that sells loads of quilting things and bag making things and is floor to ceiling like a big department store of craft cottons also sells dress patterns garment patterns and things so they've got quite a wide range and so it's just down the road i press i press whatever it is by now and i've bought it and i can go and collect it and that's great so again i'm saving on postage so i like that and i'm saving on it traveling across the country so i like that too um yes yeah, so i'm happy about that and I don't know what else I was going to say. Oh, so thank you to the people who left stuff on the table because I've cut out a toile for that with some of that fabric. And that was good because it... I know fabric's fabric and it doesn't have a value in terms of disposableness, but it felt, well, that's fine because it was a free piece anyway. And I, if I mess it up, I mess it up, but it will... It, it's a very useful thing to have been gifted so that I can try something out. So that was really nice and I, I thank that person and everyone else who has contributed to that in any way, shape or form in other places. So that's that. Um, I don't know if I've anything else. I'll just go to my good news and then I'll finish because I don't know how long I've been on but it's enough for me. Um, I had wondered about being able to go to the knitting and stitching show, not the festival, isn't it? there's a stitch festival in there. So it's a knitting and stitching show and that's at Alexandra Palace and my, my family lived down there so there was a possibility that we could have done that or I could have done that or anyway, it wasn't to be and it wasn't really what I wanted to do. I wanted to try the Harrogate one because it's not that far from me, a couple of hours, maybe a couple of two and a half, I don't know, hours away. And I mentioned to Alan, should we go or should I go or what? And then in the end, I decided, well, I am going to go. And I'm I, rather than, I don't feel like I can drive there and back. I mean, I can drive there and back, but my energy levels fluctuate, as I tell you. And if I've had a nice time, I don't want hanging over me that I've got to drive all the way back, probably by then in the dark, because it's November, isn't it? And so we were chatting about it, and then I decided I could go on the train. But that to get me there around half 10, 11 o'clock, I'd need to leave here at 7. 
and do I want to do that? Did I want to do that? Yes, it was worth doing that. So I almost booked a ticket for the Thursday. And then uh, then I, I said to Ellen, well, we could just go and you can do your own thing and I can do my own thing. We can share the drive-in. And um, he was kind of stuck for what he would want to do in the day and all that kind of thing. And then I, that's when I thought, well, I'll just go on my own and I'll go on the train. And that's what I was going to do. And then I had this lovely idea because of Nadia. And Nadia at Stitch and Style by Nadia, or with Nadia, um, had mentioned something about her sister coming round and her sewing with her and that kind of thing. And I thought, oh, our Leslie's off on Fridays. And I wonder if she would come with me. So I rang her and within two hours, <laughs> um, because she's very organised and she's quite a bit younger than me. And in two hours we had arranged where I would pick her up and um, where we would stay. And so we're going on the Friday. But, that, and that's marvellous, but that means we will be able to go in also on the Saturday for some time. So we've got a two day ticket and I am beaming about it because we very rarely spend time together now. Our connection in the in the more recent years like in the last 10 15 years have been in looking after my mum my, my dad and my mum and then my mum and um and then we had kind of a brief like two three months of where we were maybe four or five months of where she had a relative over here and we had a connection there and so we saw each other quite a bit then but then um, that's kind of drifted off now since we're not looking after my mom and, and mm. so it was just really nice that she fancied going and then she told her daughter and her daughter said her daughter she said oh Cheryl laughed and I said why and she said because she thought knitting and stitching show she doesn't realize then that we're staying over <laughs> and we're having a twin room so it's going to be a bit lively so i might be knackered driving back on the saturday but i'll have some company won't i and as sarah at so so sarah style <laughs> so so sarah styles i think i know our channel but i can't get it out she was mentioning that she drove back from Ali Pali up to the Midlands and she was fortunate that she had um, Adele from Sofa to Serenity chit-chatting away, keeping her alive and, uh, and alert and they had a really nice drive back which kind of took her through the, all the tiredness. So that was an idea for me that, well, at least Leslie and I will be, I don't think she'll be dropping asleep, <laughs> i put it like that. Okay, so that's my good news. Um, it's lovely to see you. It's lovely to be able to vlog to you. I want to thank um, Christine again. She's set up the hashtag small sewing channels or small sewing chat hashtag small sewing channel. And on that hashtag were each kind of adding names to people, other people with small sewing channels. And I keep forgetting to mention Karen Marie and someone had made a comment about watching Karen Marie and she was really good and that comment was on Christine's channel for one of her videos one of her vlogs I can't remember which one it was I don't know if Christine had already given her a mention or has as um now given her a mention but I'm giving her a mention because I've watched her channel she is adorable I mean I don't mean adorable like oh she's all twee she's a she's really ace and she knows her stuff and she is she's been sewing for a while she's quite um she's a really good vlogger uh, i feel uh, she's in norway and so there's some cultural things that i really love the connection with because i watch anna and carlos and um there are some some they're not similar at all her and uh, her channel and theirs but some of the norway references and there was one of her vlogs, she was sat outside waiting for her daughter who was in some, uh, the kind of like learning about the confirmation, doing all what she needed to, to learn for going through her confirmation. And for that, traditionally they 
often wear the Norwegian national dress. I can't think what I'm trying to say, but you know what I mean. I'm going to say national anthem, but that's not it. The national costume of Norway. And so the, she then, a few of us on the comments said we'd love to know more about that. And so she did a special a little video for that. And it was just so interesting. And so it's so lovely to know that um, the commitment to traditions is there and and just to value that and share that valuing to her i just really enjoyed it so hi karen marie if you're there i love your vlogs as you know and there was someone else now someone else i spotted this morning i've never seen her before so i'm assuming it's her first vlog and it was very introductory and she is apparent i think she's in the uk she sounded like she was in the uk i haven't watched the full vlog but she does quilting, she does soft furnishings, she does mostly garments and um, all sorts of bits and pieces. But from just the little intro that I saw, she's just very watchable and very knowledgeable and I'm adding her to my list. So I'll put that, I'll put that either down below on the screen, her, her title, her channel name, and I shall put it on my description in the bottom. So I think that's it for now and um, I'm really looking forward to going to the Harrogate Knitting and Stitching Show and um, I've already picked out what I'm going to wear and it was something I'd, I was about to alter and I'd taken part apart, part of it apart and now I'm just going to put it back together. <laughs> so yes, that was a short-lived upcycle uncycle whatever um yes so that's dead simple and i don't want to get in any stress about what i have to wear i just want to wear something comfy and warm and something i'm driving and something can, i can wander about in swan about in this wonderful place i've never been to harrogate i don't remember ever getting out of the car at harrogate i think we've driven through maybe once in whatever life I've had <laughs> so um, and we've done the outskirts as we're going through to, up to York or somewhere else so I'm really looking forward to that and yeah so I'll leave you with that in my excited mode okay thank you for watching thank you for being there if you'd like to subscribe it would be wonderful if you uh, just give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed seeing me today if you've got any comments that you'd like to leave i'd be appreciative and well happy sewing look after yourselves bye for now susan at seaside stitches signing off <laughs> bye